Hi, my name is Victor Bart, and this is my Unimog 4 forward and diesel engine. And I had a broken gear box, and I replaced the gear box with a uh, different one. And I hope that this is running uh, fine. I need to test it when my Unimog is back up and running. But I need to reinstall the cap that's now here. But this is a good opportunity to show you the diesel conversion and how I installed the diesel engine in my Unimog and the power steering and like the details of my build. So uh, yeah, let's uh, show you uh, around what I have done and how I uh, put things in place. So let's start here where normally the spare tire is, but the 12 and a half tires won't fit here. So I made two brackets here with a stainless steel box of 40 by 40 by 80 centimeters. And behind it, I have an extra air tank. And these are the lines of the uh, diff breather. So if I go through water, they won't suck up uh, water. Here we have the oil filter and we replaced it to here. And normally it's here on the side of the engine. And this is an OM617912. 80 horsepower so the early version that's why I have like the fat oil filter under the gearbox there's an extra bar to the engine for extra strength so the diesel engine is heavier this bar makes the whole package of the gearbox the bell house and the engine much stronger so if I would go airborne with my front axle and I will drop down I have less chance to crack the bell house because my bell house is not a standard bell house my bell house is modified here so this part is bigger to uh, house a uh, clutch and a pressure plate from a mercedes uh, kalanderwerke so that's much stronger than the original petrol uh, clutch so that makes uh, this conversion like really good and the clutch is like really nice and not too strong and feels good and there's an extra ring in here so the uh, clutch bearing is more forward and then the angles of all the rods are much better so my clutch is absolutely perfect in this build i replaced my uh, diesel lines here because they uh, were really uh, hardened up so i fresh lines here and I put it here in a hose to the tanks, so that is also now fixed. To fit the engine, I raised my cabin 5 cm, so I made these uh, blocks to uh, put it higher. But also the radio box is also on block, so that's also 5 cm higher. Because with my 12 and a half by 20 tires, it just looks better in my opinion. And I had more room to pull out the gear box because this is also higher. I have two air horns under the box and a uh, tank for the grey water of 36 liters. So that's the advantage of putting the box a little bit higher. And also to make everything fit, I raised the pedal uh, box also 5 centimeters. And we just welded a plate here and put it uh, up here. The gear sticks and the handbrake that fits if you lift it but in the cabin this will be more sunken in and to prevent your hand on the inner motor cover we bend it this uh, gear stick this is the gas pedal link that's connected to this construction here with springs and this arm so uh, that uh, is how my throttle works and to stop my engine i don't have vacuum anymore so what i do is just pull up the gas pedal by hand and then the engine stops and to prevent uh, that this flips to the other side i made here an extra cable and here is the cable that goes uh, to the hand gas and this is just a uh, bicycle cable thingy and if you pull it it also moves so that's really nice to have a higher RPM idle if you pump up the tires and things like that. So here we have the diesel injection pump and I put a new primer pump on it, a more modern one. And normally you have here plastic hoses and they were like 
completely gone. So I replaced it with this high quality fuel hoses and new connectors. So the fuel uh, system is completely redone with fresh hoses. And here on top we have the fuel uh, filter. And here under the box we have even a pre-filter with a water separator. And you can see here the grey water tank also hanging under the box. And that's really important because I just uh, flushed it because there was a lot of dirt uh, inside of it. And in the lines I put some extra inline fuel filters, even in the return one. So a clean diesel system is really important. And here one of the other big upgrades, that is power steering. And this is the steering house from an Unimog 406. And it is huge and I made big clamps on the front. And I put an extra half tube on here uh, that we welded to this tube. And this is super strong and I made a custom uh, steering uh, wheel that I easily can remove. So that's also a big upgrade for the Unimog. But one of the most difficult things to do with this power steering upgrade is the pitman arm here. The part on the steering box is from a 406 and the under part here is from a 404. And we welded it together and that was a weld that took like three hours. So the front of the engine is on two big uh, rubber silent blocks and the engine is hanging on these two bolts. So it can move around just like the original 404 because the whole chassis of the Unimo 404 will twist uh, if you drive in the terrain. Uh, so you need to have a flexible solution that your engine can move around. So if you put the engine on four spots, that is not good. Then all the forces, if you twist, will go in your engine mounts. And we made a big frame around the engine so it's supported here and here and now with the extra bars here it's super strong. So here a few on the other side also uh, big plates on the side also those arms. And here a big uh, metal plate on the front that keeps everything together. So the engine mountings are super strong and mounted the same way as the original M180 uh, engine, but stronger. And to, have and to have power steering, you need a power steering pump. And I have a Vickers pump here from a Mercedes MB100, and that's a perfect combination for a 404 with this steering house. And I made a custom pulley setup. There's a free spool on the fan. So uh, right now, uh, the engine is driving directly the water pump and the alternator and then from this wheel it drives the power steering and the fan and also from the main axle there's a uh, belt to the original compressor so I have a compressor, power steering, water pump and fan on the pulleys and this is a quite nice setup and for the power steering pump you also need a reservoir and that's up here now with a zip tie because the mount of this is in the cabin but I can uh, just uh, disconnect it, put it on the side and remove the cabin without disconnecting all the hoses. One thing that's a little bit difficult is checking the engine oil because if the cabin is on this is pretty deep in but it works on this spot luckily it's not here on the side and also filling the engine is up here so I just use a hose to put it in that works so this bracket goes to the radiator so the radiator is connected to the engine so uh, the fans can never be pressed into the radiator so that's also really important also with some silent blocks and the compressor is on the original uh, mounting plates and that works very well I really love the compressor uh, and the air system and here we have the alternator, it's uh, 24 volt, I think this is just a 35 amp unit, that's more than enough. And the water pipe around it. And here you see why this OM617 is such a cool engine. The intake uh, manifold and the exhaust manifold are on the same side. If you take an OM606 or something like that, the intake is on the other side. So that won't fit 
so easily in an Unimog 404 or it don't fit without heavy modifying and also the advantage of the OM617 is that it revs up to 5200 rpm that's even 400 rpm more than the original m180 engine because this is a short piston diesel engine and this engine is a five cylinder so it's a little bit shorter than most uh, six cylinders and that's why it fits in here because there are not many six cylinder mercedes diesel engines that fit in here and I see a lot of conversions where they use a Toyota engine or a Nissan engine but they don't rev high enough and then their top speed is 70 km per hour and my Unimog with 80 horsepower goes over 100 km an hour on my 12.5 k 20 tires so I can easily drive on the highway and this is on truck plate so I'm not even allowed to do 100 km an hour so I have an Unimog that goes on the highway without a problem so if you do a diesel conversion go for an OM617 912 or 952 turbo diesel or something like that don't go for something else because this is just the perfect engine for it that has uh, good speed, uh, good reliability because this is a taxi engine that easily runs 1 million kilometers just go for an OM617 and not for something else I see some people that do Volkswagen TDI conversions that's pretty cool and they do like a modification in the end reduction with different uh, carrying to get also a higher top speed so if you go for a different engine than this you need to have different carrying if you want to drive on the highway and I think an Unimog 404 is suitable enough to go on the highway because it's fast enough to drive together with the highway trucks and I just uh, replaced this uh, cable to the starter because this was uh, a really old cable first with plastic shielding that was almost done and this starter I think I googled the number it's from a Mercedes W126 or something but I don't know if this uh, starter fits with the original bell house because this is a modified one so I don't know the exact details what they used and if this plate is original or yeah I bought this already converted into an Unimog I wanted to have the engine and I wanted to have the bell house because to get a modified bell house is pretty difficult. I think a friend of mine made 10 of them and there's a German that made some of them. Not sure if, if he still sells them, but I think a modified bell housing is the key to do a really good conversion. And here you see the protection hose for the diesel lines that go to here. And also here we have the pipes for the diesel and the diff breeders and we made a uh, custom uh, exhaust I think it's a masterpiece especially this part <laughs> it works and we had like a little hole here and two on this side so we just welded and then I took some heat resistant paint and I just painted it for a little bit extra protection and it looks cool but maybe in one year it's already starting to rust but I don't mind that and also what's important that you have a really good hose between the engine and the air intake because this is the breather of the engine if you don't have this hose your engine will uh, have too high pressure and then it will start leaking oil my i first had a different hose that was bended and then i had a lot of little oil leaks and problems so that's now fixed so yeah this is my conversion with a lot of uh, custom work and a lot of details and i have a pto winch from koenig on the front I still need to put back my PTO uh, axle and that just fits between here we even modified it to make it a little bit smaller <laughs> in the middle otherwise it was hitting this pedal uh, crease thing I hope you have now some extra information how I did my conversion 
because I think to put a diesel in an Unimog 404 is one of the ultimate things to do and also the power steering it works fantastic I can steer uh, my Unimog with one finger if I want and also my workshop has a strange <laughs> a door so to move around here without power steering it's impossible and also I have the full air uh, lines on here but uh, the block that controls the yellow one to uh, the trailer brakes needs to be uh, fixed so that's now disconnected so extra airlines here all custom stuff and here a lot of power cables and the NATO connector is here and here it goes into the box because my box is 12 volt so those lines here are the 12 volt lines and I have here a line for 24 volt into the box so I hope you enjoyed my uh, little tour of my Unimog without a cap so you can see a lot of details and maybe you can pause the video and uh, make a screenshot and zoom in if you want to see more details of it and uh, you can ask any question you want and I will try to answer them and if you like to support me uh, with my broken care box and my trip to the North Cape I have a PayPal donation link in the description thanks for watching